Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. Industrial hemp is back in Kansas, and on this week's program, we head to Russell and talk with a representative of Mechanized Concepts Kansas. We'll find out what they're all about and why they chose Russell as a location. We'll also have a conversation with State Representative Troy Waymaster of Bunker Hill on what it took to get a company to come from Utah relocate to central Kansas. We'll also have features from the Kansas Soybean Commission and Kansas Department of Agriculture, as well as our weekly updates from the Kansas Livestock Association and Paragon Ag Advisors. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org. And the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, the National Sorghum Producers Board of Directors recently elected Doug Kiesling of Chase as a new board member. Kiesling, a fifth generation farmer from central Kansas where he grows sorghum, wheat, corn, soybeans, also livestock. Kiesling previously has experience not only on the state and national levels with Wheat Growers Organization, also a member of the Trump Agricultural Advisory Committee also active in the International Grains Program and many others. Also re-elected for another year as chairman of the NSP board, Dan Atkinson from Stockton in Rooks County. Well, USDA says producers who are currently participating in the federal crop insurance program are in line now for some extra help. Farmers who have had a payable prevented planted indemnity related to flooding or excess moisture or causes other than drought will automatically receive a top-up payment. Producers will get their payments from the approved insurance providers starting in just a few days. Now, producers with the yield protection as well as revenue protection with a harvest price option will get a 10% top-up payment. Producers with revenue protection will receive a 15% top-up. Now, they don't need to sign up to get those payments as all producers with a 2019 prevented planting indemnity will receive the top-up. The crop insurance industry will deliver those payments as part of the additional supplemental appropriations for Disaster Relief Act of 2019. Now, after these initial payments, any additional ones will be made at the middle of each month as more prevented planting claims will get processed. Well, uncertainty over trade policy, weather, and African swine fever dominating agricultural markets over the last quarter. It's causing some greater volatility across an industry that's affecting producers, supply chains, as well as end users. That according to the latest quarterly Rural Economic Review from CoBank's Knowledge Exchange Division. Trade negotiation breakthroughs largely remain elusive and the U.S. agricultural sector preparing for its second consecutive harvest under the shadow of hefty tariffs. Lower feed prices, however, are aiding the animal protein and dairy margins and the historical late planting of the corn crop has cast a long shadow through the quarter with extremely volatile cash corn prices. End users like ethanol producers and livestock feeders are bidding old crop corn supplies higher in anticipation for a short harvest this fall with prices falling back to levels seen prior to the spring planting season. Well, farmers continue to hold on to old crop corn supplies and hope that those prices will recover in the months ahead on some local supply shortages. But globally, grain stocks remain ample and are widely expected to dull any significant rally in corn if those harvest reports confirm a smaller than expected 
U.S. crop. Soybean prices surged late last quarter based on fears of delayed maturity of the U.S. soybean crop and hopes of resuming market access to China. This already volatile U.S. animal protein market also got even more so in the third quarter on nearly every front. Feed cost, capacity disruptions, trade, political disruptions, and the simple macroeconomic outlook. The impact of African swine fever on global pork supplies is just now beginning to be felt in the U.S. animal protein sector, while prices have ridden a roller coaster so far this year based on their expectations. The reality now, it's hitting. Trade volume expanding and begin to yield benefits to producers across the meat and poultry industries. The expanding trade volume along with the signing of some important uh, trade agreements this summer with Japan and Mexico will also aid in improving the sluggish level of trade flows uh, so far this year. Now, the new trade deal with Japan also lifts some hope of renewed exports, particularly for U.S. beef and pork. Stay with us. We'll have more in a moment. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O H L D E seed.com. And Kansas Corn. Building the future at kansascorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. We are in Russell, Kansas, the home now of Mechanized Concepts Kansas. Matthew Driscoll joins us. Uh, Matthew, uh, we're going to get into one of the reasons why we're here, but uh, tell us about what is Mechanized Concepts Kansas. Uh, Mechanized Concepts Kansas is a manufacturing, uh, engineering, and design firm based out of Lehigh, Utah that has uh, moved to Kansas um, to help consult with farmers um, on the upcoming new hemp crop that the state is growing. And so well, we'll talk maybe more about this over the course of our interviews, but uh, Russell County has been one of those innovators that, that really embraced uh, that opportunity for industrial hemp. And so through that uh, process, uh, this company is, uh, you all have landed here. Yes, through this company, uh, we found Mechanized Concepts actually in Topeka, and uh, we had we found out we had the same attributions. We we got along well, and um, it was a good mesh, and so we recruited them to Russell. Now, a few months ago, there was kind of that uh, open house or that uh, arrival, if you will. Uh, where are we at in the process, not only of, uh, of, of hemp uh, crop in Kansas now and, and the process of what's going on here at Mechanized Concepts Kansas? Right now, the, the company is actually pushing out an automation project that we're working on, and we're getting ready to bring in the new hemp aspect of the company and start making the headers for the new production. And since this, right now, the farmers are harvesting their hemp right now. A lot of them have harvested, some are still harvesting. So um, we hope to be doing some R&D by the end of the year. 
So one of the things you do is do community outreach. Tell us what uh, that entails and what a typical day is for you to go out in these communities. A typical day for me going out into the community is just going to the grocery store or talking to a Rotary Club or going to surrounding counties and talking um, to public service organizations. We've also been talking to the Hanson Foundation, an innovation program that they have started. And um, so a normal day for me is just talking, Ken, just talking nonstop. So are, do, you, do you like that? I assume you seem to be good at it right now anyway. Yeah, well, I, I love it. I love going out and meeting new people, and I love educating them on the new crop that, well, the old new crop, I like to call it, because Kansas did produce it in the 30s, and um, a lot of the constituents that we have here in their 90s still remember when Kansas was a hemp producer. So it's kind of, it's very interesting to see them do the full circle. All right, and why Russell? Why not? Sounds good. Matthew Driscoll has uh, joined us. We are at Mechanized Concepts Kansas, and one of the new companies has come to the state as well as to central Kansas. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Grass and grain, online or in the mail, keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com and agview.net, serving the beef belt and western corn belt with reliable and relevant agriculture information. Agview.net. Imagine turning soybean oil, used cooking oils, and waste animal fats into fuel so amazing it drives U.S. jobs and our economy forward. Learn more about biodiesel at americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. And welcome back to Russell. We're at Mechanized Concepts Kansas. And joining us now is Troy Waymaster, who is a member of the Kansas House of Representatives and a, a working farmer. Also, so he actually, when we talked to him here, we got him out of the field. You know, it's wheat planting time in Kansas. But we want to spend, Troy, some time with you. Uh, you were one of those that helped spearhead the effort from maybe a state level in trying to help get a company like Mechanized Concepts Kansas here. Uh, talk about the process and, and how the state, uh, it's quite a unique partnership to bring this company to Russell. It was a unique partnership. Um, actually, last year in October, uh, actually we were rained out in the Milo harvest field, and that's when uh, we were having lunch here in, in Russell, and actually I had a meeting with the individuals from Mechanized Concepts, and they were looking at Russell as a possible location. Uh, due to the hemp laws that we changed in, during the legislative session of 2017. And so I had a discussion with them about exactly what they were going to bring from Utah to Kansas and uh, was very interested. And so when we started the legislative session, um, actually, we, you know, we had a change in the administration. So we had a new Secretary of Commerce. And in the Appropriations Committee, we had the uh, Secretary of Commerce uh, then, uh, David Tolan, uh, addressed the committee and then afterwards I had a meeting with him because I am the representative for Russell County and they've been very active in hemp legislation and obviously with mechanized concepts looking at Russell uh, I wanted to talk about what the state could do to uh, entice them to move from Utah to the state of Kansas. And they came here basically as, as, a, as a family or two and then trying to find folks and of course Russell has a long history of uh, doing some some small manufacturing and, and, and doing it now so it seemed to be probably what a natural fit. Well, it was a great fit in the fact that in the 1990s, King of the Road had a manufacturing plant here that closed. Um, and so we had the facility here, and that was one of the positives for Mechanized Concepts, is that the facility was already in the community. Not only did they love the community, love the people in it, uh, they loved the field, the work ethic, 
but there was also that benefit of already having a facility that was a manufacturing uh, plan at one time. Um, and so that was one of the great positives uh, that enticed them to come to Russell. Does that help the incentives maybe in looking at bringing businesses in as if you have already an established physical plant there? It, it escalates the time frame, I mean, as far as uh, the production of what Mechanized Concept wants to do. Um, as far as the package that the state put together, it was not only just the state, but it was also the city of Russell and also Russell County itself uh, that took a, a package together and gave that to Mechanized Concepts. But I do have to say, in all my years in the legislature, I have never seen um, such a benefit package for a company that was moving into rural Kansas. Um, the state of Kansas uh, wanted this company to come to the state. Um, in fact, uh, you know, when we had the, the ribbon cutting, the governor was here for the ribbon cutting. Uh, we met with the governor, we met with the Secretary of Commerce, um, and everybody wanted to have mechanized concepts come to Kansas. We're talking with uh, Representative Troy Waymaster. He's a, a member of the State House from Bunker Hill, and we are at Mechanized Concepts Kansas. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value, that future is here, the time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. The Kansas Soybean Commission is requesting research and education proposals for its fiscal year 2021 which begins July 1, 2020. Proposals are due October 15, and an individual may be listed as the principal investigator or educator on only one. The commissioners will review ideas for breeding, production, and environmental programs, animal and human nutrition or food safety studies, commercially significant value-added projects that will use large quantities of soybeans, and domestic or international marketing and transportation programs. More information about the Commission's priorities, complete instructions, and application forms are available at kansassoybeans.org forms on the web or by calling the Kansas Soybean Office at 877-KS-SOYBEAN. That's 877-577-6923. Proposers who gain preliminary approval from the commissioners will make formal presentations December 5 through 7 in Topeka or via teleconferencing. The three-day funding meeting will begin at 8 a.m. each day. The commissioners also will discuss current projects, market development activities, educational programs, and administrative items. To obtain a complete agenda or to suggest additional topics for deliberation, Contact Administrator Kenlin Johannes at the office. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, 
But how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. The mission of the Kansas Department of Agriculture includes a commitment to help ensure the protection of natural resources. And much of that focus on natural resources at KDA is through the Division of Conservation. The Division of Conservation works to protect and enhance Kansas natural resources through policies, guidelines, and programs designed to assist local government and individuals, especially conservation districts. Conservation programs include initiatives directed at water resources, riparian and wetlands, soil health, and other land and water conservation programs. Soil health education has been a priority for the Division of Conservation over the last couple of years. The Division has funded more than 40 soil health workshops in the last two years, sharing information about cover crops, proper grazing management, and the science behind soil health with local communities across the state. Last year, we provided over $50,000 in grants to support these soil health workshops, made possible through the Nonpoint Source Pollution Control Program funded by the Kansas Water Plan. KDA has also helped promote attendance at the No-Till on the Plains Winter Conference, which provides information for producers to examine the efficiency and profitability of no-till systems. This past year, 66 conservation district supervisors and 13 first-time attendee landowner operators were funded for scholarships to attend the conference. To learn more about the many ways the Division of Conservation at the Kansas Department of Agriculture helps protect the natural resources of the state, including the cost share programs and information and education programs available in your area, Go to agriculture.ks.gov slash conservation. Green sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value, that future is here, the time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. The Kansas Beef Council recently hosted education and media training workshops for students enrolled in dietetic internship programs at the University of Kansas Medical Center and Kansas State University in Manhattan. More than 30 dietetic interns and faculty members participated in the events. These checkoff-funded sessions are designed to provide accurate, peer-reviewed information and practical experience with beef to aspiring professionals who will reach thousands of consumers with dietary advice during their careers. During the workshops, interns learned about beef nutrition and the current state of protein research from Kansas Beef Council Director of Nutrition, Abby Hadari. Participants also had the opportunity to hear from Kansas ranchers. Ren and Arturo Pacheco of Alma met with those attending the KU event, while interns at K-State heard from Mindy Kraft of Phillipsburg. National Cattlemen's Beef Association Director of Grassroots Advocacy and Spokesperson Development Ryan Goodman presented tips about responding to media questions. In addition, Goodman and Kansas City Registered and Licensed Dietitian Bethany Frazier 
led a workshop on how to conduct food and cooking demonstrations on television and Instagram Live. Students practiced these skills through mock interviews about new protein research and through cooking demonstrations where they grilled top sirloin steaks and discussed how to build a healthy diet with beef. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Hi, everyone. Zach Otot here with Paragon Ag. This week, we saw a push higher in the grain markets, more specifically corn and soybeans. The USDA's quarterly ending stocks report came in as much of a surprise of the trade, with lowering both corn and soybean ending stocks. They lowered corn by 330 million bushels and beans by nearly 70. Both were not only well below estimates, but were even below the range of the analyst estimates. As you can imagine, corn and beans both sustained double-digit gains. Looking more at the fundamentals, we have seen China come back to our doorstep and have made soybean purchases over the last few weeks. We are continuing to hear positivity out of trade talks with China, though a deal has yet to be reached. Considering the recent political headlines, those talks may get pushed to the back burner for the near term. As for corn, we are still looking for an export market with a strong U.S. dollar United States corn as well as other ag exports are not as attractive to foreign buyers. With impeachment talks swirling, this has potential to weigh on the macro markets and could lead to the dollar losing value because a weaker dollar is typically positive for the ag markets. Wheat didn't get the same reaction this week as report was neutral. We are seeing the carry in the Chicago wheat market come out showing us a friendly indicator. Kansas City wheat, not the same story. It acts a lot like a feed grain. When corn has a positive day, winter wheat will follow, and vice versa. Next week, we have another report. It's the October WASD. With harvest beginning to pick up, I would doubt the USDA makes any drastic changes to yield acres. However, we have seen them throw us a curveball before. It feels as though any changes to 2019 production won't happen until we get into and past harvest. As we all know, Mother Nature still swings the biggest stick, and any harvest issues or delays will be positive for the market. If you have any questions on any of these topics, give us a call here at Paragon Ag Advisors at 888-452-8751. I'm Zach Gotop. Have a great day. Well, that's our show this week. Be social with us online at kansasagreport.net. Like us on Facebook at Kansas Ag Report Television Show. Follow us on Twitter at Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.